Hello, welcome to Will Forge. I will, and today, as in all other days, we will forge. Oh man. So, <laughs> today, we've got we've got the base built out in the back. I did fulfill that promise off stream. I finished up this section of the wall, uh, and I finished up this. And in the end, uh, like at the end of the last stream, you can kind of come out here, but that thicket, you know, this gets in the way, it looks just about right, you can almost see too much, and then you do start to fall off. So, there is still that little, that little lip, but it's not like the end of the world, I don't think. I think that that works fine. It's not one-to-one -one because of that lip, but it won't be the end of the world in this particular case because I don't think it's really going to come up all that often. Uh, it's just going to give the sniper just one little bit more, uh, you know, area to, to poke their head out over here. Eh, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, what's actually most interesting to me is that I got all these heights right, you know, and in Halo 2, you can't get up here because you just just barely can't crouch jump to get up here, right? But in here, you can, you can clamor. So you can just hop right up here. And uh, that's one of the many things that's going to be really cool about this version, uh, where it's one-to-one, -one, but because of the movement of Halo Infinite, it's a little bit different. Like how over here, you can't quite make it up, except that you can clamor at the very last second. Just like in Halo 2, you wouldn't be able to make it up that, except at the last second you can clamor, so that you don't even really need that box. There will be the box so you can get up here really quickly, uh, where you can crouch jump it. As long as you use the, the crate. Um, but yeah, so we've got a lot of stuff going on. I'm, I think today, um, all of this is, like, the base is pretty much done. I mean, like, I've still got this weird thing as the flag, and I might change that. I use the, the fact that it's all bent up is perfect for, you know, a little cloth kind of dangling. Uh, it doesn't move, of course, and that would be cooler if it did. I could put one in here, too. Anyway. Uh, I think it's time to start to select things and copy across. Let me go ahead. I forgot. I have not hit tweet. There we go. Tweet that out. And, uh... Let's see. Alright, and let me switch to where I can see chat, because I can't actually see chat right now. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, so a lot of today is going to be... Oh yeah, I was supposed to change that thing. A little message that doesn't say 80% done with Waterworks. I want to take out that percentage, but I keep on forgetting to do that before the stream goes live. Um, so I am going to select all of this ground and make it into a prefab. I've got to do only the ground that I actually need. The stuff that's not already in another prefab. I don't want to do the same thing I did yesterday where I accidentally selected so much of that cave. That was a no-no. <laughs> that was a bad idea. It messed up the entire entire prefab setup. Um, I also need to, at some point, probably off-stream because it'll be boring to watch, um, go ahead and grab the, uh, like, go into the menu and uh, apply... Ooh, I did not want that prefab. Uh, go ahead and apply the... Um, Nope, oh, that's not the prefab. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, the, uh... Move everything around, like apply the organizational system to everything, so that everything is sort of, you know, appropriately, um... Appropriately associated with one another. I want to... I, I, I try to keep that nice and organized, but ever since I've, uh, come back from, you know, my little hiatus there, I have not done... I haven't even gone into select... A root folder or a working folder so that everything I do and add is organized right off the bat so literally everything's just dumped into the main you know folder in here like it's this is really badly organized I've got everything in here <laughs> like I can't even like like normally you can like hit these little folders and collapse them let me go to uh, top here. Gameplay can just collapse entirely. Normally I can collapse all the folders and it basically becomes nothing. But now this is... All of this is outside of a folder right now. 
So I've got to go and do that at some point. Okay, so let's see. But today I'm copying over, which means we're getting really close to being done. Um, because on the other side, you know, it's just a big opening. I believe this is even the old slope over here that I need to delete to make room for the new one. Um, and a lot of this ground terrain I need to select out and delete and get rid of. Um, even this is incorrectly angled. It's like too far to the left, like it's turned a little bit. It needs to be, these should be basically in alignment. So all of that I fixed over here. So that's how the original one was, like this. This is the more, almost exactly like the original shape. Part of the prefab. I might have all of the ground terrain selected. Oh, you know what I haven't done? I haven't put the ground terrain into here and right here. Cover up that. So I need to do that before I copy it over, but I can prefab this out first. I'm going to make all of this part of this. I'm going to make this a prefab, and then the ceiling and wall a prefab, then the base into as few prefabs as possible, which it's not going to be very... You know, it's going to be probably three, I think. I think it is already three. And uh, yeah, that should work. This is already a small prefab with that. So I might... Well, I'll figure this out. First, I'm going to prefab... Oh, oh, I didn't hold it long enough. <laughs> prefab that, and then I'll remove this from the prefab. See how many is in this. Okay, yeah. This area is prefabbed in with that. I might, I'm probably going to co combine it into that. Um, I guess I must have changed up this area as well beforehand. I'm going to probably make that whole sidewall a prefab, so I'm going to take all of this out. Since it's all right here, it should be fairly easy to remove all at once. And then I'm going to add it all back into the ground prefab. Let's see, what was that little yellow? Okay, I got rid of that. There we go. And then this one's going to have all of this in it. Which is good. And then uh, I guess I'll go up the wall a little bit, a little way. Whoop. Whenever I copy it across, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of a, a, a job, but it's also going to be fairly satisfying. It's also going to be uh, like the way I'm doing it right now is the cleanest way to do it that I'm aware of in Infinite so far. So like, if you don't know how to do this, that's a pretty good little lesson, I suppose you have to chop up your thing into little sections and each section uh, you can see at the bottom of the screen there it says 66 of 150 um, you're gonna want to make sure each section is no more than 150 pieces then um, you'll be good because whenever you go to copy it, it yeah you won't have a problem um, okay so we're going to do I think there are actually some finishing touches that I'm catching oh says this piece in it. Oh. What piece is in it here? Oh no, never mind. It was just high no it is lit up. What piece is it trying to claim that I have? No? Weird. There are clearly two pieces right here. Nope, that's something else. I don't know what's going on here. Weird. Okay. <laughs> uh, it'll get copied across because it's in both pre. It's in. It's in that prefab, so it's not a big deal. But uh, whatever it is, it'll it'll come with me. prefab area. Actually, I guess I should have. Yeah. Okay. That's part of the prefab. The big one. Is this... This is not. Okay. 
So I should include that. The ground. Okay. Basically everything that's here is already copied over. All this green outline is, but all this stuff isn't. So I need to get it all in there. Okay. So since I have this selected, I guess I can show you how copying across goes. I've got this block here that's attached to this, part of the central structure, that I know for a fact is identical on both sides, left to right, right? One side to the other. I've got this one here that also is, you know, this part of the bridge as well, has a good spot right here. Now I did notice that this piece I believe somehow got misaligned probably in all the times that it accidentally copied it and I have no idea um, if I need to move it over or not um, this is a strange piece that I don't even recognize and I don't know what's going on here huh. yeah the doorway seems to be messed up in some way. So I've always considered deleting this and recopying it. And I might do that now because uh, this shouldn't be happening. It's clipping through here. It's clipping over here and it's clipping over here. But it doesn't clip here and it doesn't clip over here, which means there were some times whenever the thing bugged out and it copied over. And because this side is responsible for all of the, you know, the pieces that are attached over here, I might as well go ahead and copy it over right now too. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and select this. This is going to be kind of scary because most of the map is going to be gone. So we're going to save it real quick. Boom. Then we're going to hit this. We're going to select this one piece. Actually, I said earlier you want only 150 up down there. But you actually want to go to... I'll show you. In this... No, not that one. In this one, you'll find that it is 76. You don't want to go above 149. That's what it is. Because you want to select your cube that sort of acts as a uh, guide. You want to duplicate this. And that's going to duplicate your entire thing. You want to look at it, by the way. So you, you might have seen that I was looking at the piece I was about to duplicate. That's important because it keeps it from like making like a million copies of the same piece. Now, where is this piece, these, uh, the segment that it created? It'll, like, it'll create, like, a dozen copies of it. Okay, I don't know where the copy is. <laughs> what did it do with it? Oh, here it is. This, this nonsense over here, is it? And unfortunately, with prefabs, it doesn't select them. Right now, I only have one object selected, and that one object is the cube that I had selected. It'll, it'll select singular objects that you copy. It won't select the prefab you copy. So you gotta reselect your prefab. Right? And then once you have your, re your prefab selected, you can drag it over. That is not moving my cube. What the hell? Okay. So something happened wrong. Am I dragging the other prefab with this? No? What two objects do I have selected right now? This is strange. Usually it works the way I was describing. And it's all messed up. So we're going to go ahead and start this process over by deleting that. Now nah, we're just gonna, we're gonna leave and come back in because I had that other mysterious single object selected and I don't know what that was. And all I can do is assume I just deleted some random item on the map. And that's no good. Yeah, we'll move it here latest version. This is better than losing some random piece of the, map, of the geometry. Could be a single piece, it could be an entire prefab. And we don't know. It's a very disturbing process the uh, copying one part of the map to the other because of all of the way things that can go wrong 
Um, there are a lot of little bugs here and there. And you really don't want it to uh, completely wreck half of a map or whatever, or an su entire segment in this case, it's a big team battle map. But if you're look if you're making a 4v4 map, it could be like a quarter or half of your entire map could just get wrecked <laughs> in an instant, just because you went to copy it and it just didn't want to do it. And obviously in those cases, you probably don't need to have even a guiding point like I have there uh, at the top of the bridge with little cubes. Um, well, they're more like, you know, rec rectangles or something. They're too tall to be cubes. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they, um, see, I always come in here and first thing is I hide this measuring marker until I need it again. Um, it was there to guide where I put the base. Let's see, select that. Oh, did I already delete it? I did not delete it. So we delete the old one, out with the old, and end with the in with the current. Let's see. Could not place object not in a physical space. Okay. And we'll go over here and try it. Hmm. That's strange. It doesn't want to copy this time. forget how to solve this, but I usually just try at different angles until it eventually it lets me. Okay, I'm still selecting one object, and I don't know what it is. But we're going to find out what this is real quick. Just see if we can fly around and find it. Is it the cube? The old cube? No, I have no idea what it's claiming I have selected, but I don't trust it. I'm deselecting all. Select this one. Select the cube. It's very, very dark over here. Um, and then I'm going to go into rotation. 45 degrees. Tick, tick. I know I could just go 90. Instead of two ticks, I could go one tick. And maybe that's safer. I still, by the way, I'm holding it down for an extended period of time. Because as I have been educated, it's... Oh, I need to turn this completely around. What am I doing? Uh, I've got to... Uh, you have to hold it still. You saw how it all like slid around whenever I messed it up earlier. That's a... Uh, it's a huge issue um, that I'm sure the Forge team is looking into uh, trying to solve. But right now, we've got to hold it down for a really long time like this. Try and, uh, you know, make sure it won't get you know, messed up. Now, the server's probably caught up by now, and I can let go. Now these are actually part of the, um, the cave wall that I ended up having to throw in as part of the this, but I think either that or they're parts that are outside of the cave wall. Yeah, these might be environment pieces that I had experimented with. Um, so this one's part of the cave wall. These pieces are just uh, experimentation. This piece, for example. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go into... Let's, uh, we have our cube selected. Yeah, so let's deselect everything, reselect this. In the middle of this, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up before I put it into position. I don't want these to be... That one can stay in the prefab because it's possibly part of the environment that I need to go in this prefab. But I can delete these. And then I can clean this up. Oh, what's that cube doing there? That's probably left over from some movement I did a long time ago. Or duplication. Anyway, um, so now that I selected the cube, move, oh. so move is, you know, like that, and then you turn on uh, snapping, and you can see the cube gets this little thing, we're going to drag it in here, you might need to go down a bit, and just line it up with. I was lining up with this corner here, like that. I try to get as close as I possibly can, just eyeballing it, and then I hold it for a really long time, because the server is going to see that I'm snapping it and will grab the new location. Uh, it, it actually doesn't mess up, from what I can tell, uh, whenever the magnet tries to pull everything, uh, even though you can't hold it down for that, you know what I mean? Uh, but if you hold it down before the magnet takes over, it seems to work pretty well to uh, snap your, your your points into position. So, put my aimer there, and wait, and then let go. 
So in other words, holding it down was working for this snapped position that it took over, and not for the position that I had right before it snaps. And that's how I would expect it to work, and it does work that way. Now, I don't know what's going on here. I want to know what's happening on this side. That's the doorway up there. Dude, is, is everything wrong over here? Because, like, this... This piece is supposed to be up there. It's like part of the shroud of the like the upper area of the door. And yet for some reason it's down here and I, I don't understand why. And uh, this piece is all of course broken. And this piece, um, oh thank goodness I didn't save the um, part where I removed it as a prefab, right? We, we closed out I think after that, didn't we? For the episode. Um, but yeah, so I theoretically could copy everything back over again because it looks like it's a little bit off. Um, I'm a little worried that the, um... I'm a little worried that the entire tunnel is off because if it is, I mean, I built this entire segment off of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's something weird here. So a lot of the times it'll mess up and it'll make multiple copies of the rock that you were trying to move. And uh, at some point, whenever that happened, it probably... I didn't delete the right rock segment, like the... Well, I said the rock. I mean, whenever you copy a large thing like this one. This one is 148. Um, and because it's 148, it's um, very likely to, you know... It'll, it'll copy it like a dozen times. Or like, it, it'll copy it until it tries to fill up your entire budget, basically. It's literally what the bug is trying to do, is fill out the entire budget with it, with that one piece, uh, with that one prefab. And uh, what it'll do is, it, it, like, basically that makes me have to, like, come in and, like, select it and, like, delete the thing to get rid of it. Let's see, is it blocking off everything? It's not blocking off over here, but it is over here. That means this piece is actually part of something that's broken. Oh, jeez. Okay, so the piece that I accidentally de-prefabbed is what's broken, and it's everywhere. It's all over the place with nasty, chunky rocks that are just intervening with everything. This is the kind of thing where, like, the bugs actually do get in the way. Okay, I understand now. So basically, this all needs to be deleted and recopied because of that one time that I accidentally de-prefabbed it. That's why this side looks right, because it's part of that big prefab. And then this piece is a little weird and poking out, and then all of this is weird. It's because it's the other side, the other prefab. Okay, there's two prefabs of rock over here because I had too, so many pieces. Possibly too many pieces. I, might, I, might, I was even thinking about like trimming it down a bit. But I don't know what to do about these things. There's only nine of them so far. They're messed up. This is definitely messed up. Oh, you know what? I might be able. I might be able to go in here. Let's see. Let's go. Uh, cave roof A. No. Yeah. Okay. I didn't keep this up to date enough. So for this to work. Tunnel and bridge, maybe. Yeah. Here we go. Alpine rock chunks. And I've got some of them selected. So all of these... Oh, uh, no. That's the... Well, actually, yeah, that might be part of the same prefab in a second. Okay. Okay. Whoops. I don't know why it started moving, but we're deleting these anyway, so... That's weird. Okay. Alright, so basically... This is all a prefab, let's see what all it has. So it included these chunks, did not include these. Okay, so everything that broke is pretty much what I had selected just now. There's like a little piece in here that I missed. Okay. Unfortunately, failed to, to uh, keep them selected properly. There we go. Then select this, select this rock. What's that? 
this rock as well. There's two of them. Oh, these are the ones that were inside this wall. Okay. I wonder if they're even necessary. They look really weird and out of place. This one, I think, smooths over that that junction right there. A little piece right there. Okay. And then... Now we've got... And then we've got to get the ones over here. This one, this one, this one. Anything that's not part of a greater prefab is part of this. Oh, really, this entire slope. Oh, I thought there's a slope over here. Guess not. You can actually delete all of this that isn't part of that prefab because. I'm debating whether or not I just need to select everything on this side of the map and delete it all and recopy it. Just so that I know for a fact that I've got everything, you know, in the right spot. That might be necessary. Like, these things are going to be in the wrong spot, so I might as well delete them. Hmm. And there are actually only two segments. Which, um... I don't even do two segments anymore. All my... <laughs> all my, uh, things are the three-segment, or even four-segment, uh... Stalagmites, uh, stalagmites at this point. Okay, that piece needs to go. Alright. It's very, very dark. If I could, um... It would be potentially a good idea to move one of those work lamps over here. Uh, while I'm doing this. I might do that in a second. These I haven't changed, so I can probably leave them there. Even though they typically would have been in the same prefab as all of the other stalagmites. Okay. I think that's everything. Wait, what's this piece down here? That's part of the prefab. It's just part of the, the ramp piece and everything. Okay. Okay. Okay, we delete all these. See if there's anything left that we missed. That's not part of a prefab. These must have ended up inside of the other one. So whenever I mess that up, I mess it up big time. Okay. <clears throat> There's another one. That was inside of the others. Completely invisible until just now. Let's see if there's any more of those down here. No. Oh, the lights are all messed up. You see a little arrow? But yeah, that's going to be there, actually, whenever it builds out. But we're not going to actually put it in the right spot until you, until you hit the build button. All right. <laughs> it's a little bit of a weird situation. Okay. Oh, here's one. Let's see. There's one. There's one. That strangely is part of a correct prefab, apparently. What is it going on here? Why is this not part of a prefab? And this one? Did I... No? They are part of a prefab over here. So I must have had to break them out for some reason? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Ah, this piece. Okay, so I should be able to get all of those to come back over. Now that I've got them all gone on this side. Okay. So, this prefab. It also comes with this prefab. There's all of those stalagmites and stalactites. And that should be, I believe those are all less than, um, less than 148, or 149, rather. And I can verify that. Ooh, I've got some up there. Hmm. I need to check for that. 
Because I don't think I saw any up top. Yeah, there are plenty up here. Okay. I'm going to try to... Um, I'm going to check how many are in this prefab. Um, there's only 44. So, how many are in this one? Uh, 21. Um, I could combine those and just make them one prefab and move them all at once very easily. Yeah, I'm going to get the work lamp. This is getting a little bit weird up that high. It's a little bit too dark. It's a little dark. It's very dark at the bottom, but it's way too dark up top. Move that over here. I'm going to move this one. It's blaringly light. Right. Over this side. Just so I can see the cave on both sides. There we go. So this piece, and that piece, and that piece. It's prefab. That piece. Delete them. All green. All part of the greater prefab. Wait, what's that? That piece. Okay. That piece. Okay. And that one. No? Oh, wait, what's going on here? Oh, that's the one that is part of this ground piece. Yeah. Actually, kind of funny because this one has 148, and that one piece could be part of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually, well, it's not like that over there. So, and we already have it copied. It's good how it is. I'll leave it how it is. <laughs> I don't want to go too crazy. There we go. And that one, I'm going to copy them as individuals. It's two different prefabs. And uh, we're going to copy them over to this side, like we did the other one. If we are over here, they'll copy to this side of it. Like that. There we go. Wow, there's a lot of pieces in the ceiling that I was not, that don't have accountable. That I don't have accounted for. So, over here, that means there are some pieces over here. They're not part of the prefab? Is that it? Yeah, that's one. And that's part of that ceiling piece. And there's a second ceiling beneath it. I don't know if that was a necessary piece or not. But there's apparently a few of these scattered around that are in this prefab. So I probably built it in the uh, folder menu. There we go. This one looks out of place. You can kind of tell it's one. I built it out in the, the folders menu, like, uh, I think I just found it there. That's one. Is this one? Yep. Oh, wait, that could be... Oh, wait, hold on. That's probably part of... Yeah, that's all part of this piece. I can... I gotta be careful on this side. There's a new cave is over here, and that area hasn't been copied over yet. Um, okay. area actually um, what is happening there oh because they're dynamic objects they haven't taken an effect yet until I do the build out thing I see I'm gonna do that real quick so you do this and it, you go back into forge and all of your lights are let's see that should be all straightened up now and all my lights are actually in the correct location and I have no idea why that bug even exists why the lights fall through the floor Seems really weird, but whatever. There's a workaround, so it's not a big deal. It's just a weird bug. Okay. That's hot more. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I didn't see you even in here. Let's see. Uh, okay. So we've got all of this. Um, we need to... I think it might be time to copy them over. Um... Oh wait, we already copied them. That's right. What am I talking about? We might be time to move them into position. I mean, let's see that, that, and that. What we're gonna do is rotate this around. Uh, what just happened? Did it rotate an actual logical direction whenever I press the button? Um, what? 
Oh, there we go. There we go. It uh, immediately rotated the moment I pressed the button. Okay, this is where we want it. Got to hold it for a couple seconds for it to verify. Let's see. Um, and... Let go. There we go. Okay. Got our snap positions. What snaps over there? I wonder what that is. Oh, lights. I bet that's little pieces of light. Little light objects that are part of the uh, entryway over there. Let's see. We're going to turn off snapping and hold it for a second because I want to get in closer so I can snap it a little better. Um, but I don't want it to break either, so we got to hold it here for a second. And done. Then come down here. There we go. Put that there as close as we can. Hold it. Can't even see the rest of the piece being moved in position right now, but we're we're doing it. We're holding it. And then we're gonna assume. Well, actually, I can look up and look around. And then uh, let go to snap into position. We have all these pieces in the correct spots. That's weird looking. Is that actually where it is on the other side? Because if it is, that piece can be deleted. It might have been part of an older version of how this tunnel was built out and I didn't ever remove it or something. But now our doorway is actually framed correct correctly, which is good because that means the bridge is all in the correct location. Which also, you know, explains why over here didn't seem to have a problem either. Um, that little hole there, was that there on the other side? Over here. Um, yeah, I ended up making that hole on both sides. So I could fill that in theoretically, but it's not a vital, you know, hole to fill in. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we'll, we'll handle that later if we're going to do it at all. Okay, so we've got this thing, which was ready to go over. Let's see, do we have all of the. So we've got these in position as part of that larger one, so they're definitely the correct ones. We need this piece. Let's go pick that over. Let's do that. Let's go with this ground piece. And uh, how many are in this? This one was 82. We can actually probably add these stalagmites to it, but I think I'm going to make them their own. Um, the ones back here as well. Their own uh, little prefab. Uh, so that's what we're going to do with that. And we're going to select this. Once again, we're going to duplicate it. You end up with a lot of these little cubes inside of each other. I think I've got like probably like 10 of them right here and like 10 of them over here or more. Because um, I had to copy from one side to the other. But let's save it. Since we've already gotten a few without messing up the map, let's do that. Um, let's go over here. Copy it out the, over on the side. Those pieces can go. They're not necessary. Um, let's see. Duplicate go. Did that work? Yeah, that's just inside. That's where the base is. The base is located right there, and then that's outside of the map. This is kind of what it looks like, this terrain, without anything else. It looks kind of lumpy here because the uh, the cave wall actually makes that look less lumpy, the way it interacts with it. And like, like uh, you know, kind of covers up the, uh, the problems. <laughs> there we go. Now we're going to drag this all the way over here. And over here we're going to... Down. Let's see. And we're going to hold it for a minute. The holding it part is the only part that makes this section of the uh, of doing the map kind of boring. It's otherwise it's like, yeah, it's like entire sections being built out all at once. You know what I mean? It, it actually kind of is pretty cool, but then like... The fact that I have to hold it down to make sure the sections don't break themselves is the uh, the only part that really, really especially makes this part boring at all. Um, let's see, now we hold this still. Hold it steady until the rotation is okay. I, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to 180 because it's really just, that's all it is, I gotta flip it. That means one, one rotation from now on will bring me to where it needs to be. And that's, you know, Hopefully it can process one rotation smoother than, you know, more than one. 
um, like, you know, whatever it was I was doing. Four of them for 45 degrees. It's like, yeah, it wasn't really necessary, I suppose. Okay, there we go. Now we bring it in here. We can use that middle one because all of these cubes are lined up correctly, but really I've been using that one. I know they're all the same at this point. Uh, because I already have a cube here, but I was lining it up here because the first one had to be lined up to the corner of that silver piece instead of to the corner of one of the other cubes. Uh, but now there's so many cubes here, it doesn't really matter which one I line it up with. I'm just going to hold it for a couple seconds so I don't flip all of my pieces out. And release. And that is a second half of the map. I don't see any issues about what was duplicated what wasn't. Doesn't look like I missed any pieces, but I'll go back over it again later. And also, maybe you guys, whenever you play on the map, you can come back and let me know. Um, okay, so we've got that. So now we have two halves of the map. And uh, I'm going to go with this piece next. Make sure we have everything. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We're going to copy it out. Uh, we're going to go this way, I guess. Gonna hit uh, duplicate. Could not. Not enough physical space. You know what? I need to save it. <laughs> and you can see my budget only went up by two percent from this. You would think, oh man, these are huge sections of the map, right? But most of my budget is in like the lighting and stuff, which means it doesn't actually matter. Uh oh. What is happening? What are these extra cubes? Oh, it's double duplicating the cubes? Is this what that extra object that was always selected is? Is these weird floating cubes out here? Because I just realized that whenever I duplicated that one, now I've got a cube in here. Oh, good. It's right there. It's not too hard to find. That's my cube to line up this piece on the opposite side. Is this one right here? Because it's, you know, that was the piece, so it's got to be over here. So that one, it's out through the wall, and it's going to be here. But uh, these three... I have no idea what's going on with these three. This one is part of this? Oh, that's, yeah, that is part of that. So these two, these two, which are actually perfectly aligned with one another and aligned with where the cube is in the middle of the map. So, yeah, I think these are the bug that are happening where it still has one object selected. So I gotta go wander around and look for these little, little cube pieces after all this is said and done. Uh-oh. That is not the cube. Uh-oh. Where is my alignment cube? There it is. It's gotta be this one. It's gotta be, right? Um, we gotta select this one last. Deselect it and reselect it. That is so weird. That it duplicated it like three times. Okay, well, let's go over here. Uh, turn off magnets the whole thing over. Yeah, this looks like it's appropriately distanced. What is this piece? Why is it part of this? <laughs> Alright, well, whatever it is must be missing from over here. Yeah, there's a little lip right there. That's probably where it goes. Okay, um, we're gonna hold it for a second. And uh, let it lock itself in. And then release it. And, ooh, that looks kind of cool. Okay, so, there we go. 180, immediately flipped around. And then hold it for a second. It's all the way over there now. Um, it would be cool to be able to turn on those outlines. Like, that's one of the things that I asked for uh, in the um, request. Um, what do you call it? Uh, like, forum thread. Um, in the requests, I, I asked for the ability to toggle on and off a something akin to the... Oh, okay. She said it goes over here. I wonder if I even use this piece, that piece. Yeah, I'm going to wait, and then we're getting closer to line this up properly. Um, I had asked for a, the ability to toggle on and off an ODST-style visor, uh, you know, outline that would potentially be either toggling on and off the outlines for that are already in the game or a full-blown ODST one 
um, that you know would be something you could toggle on and off in the scripts so that you don't have to um, so that basically if we wanted to oh it's not using this as the primary snapping point which means it's using that one yeah I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna have to re deselect this cube and reselect it because if it's the last object you have selected it's the piece that it uses for the magnets I'm just gonna hold it here for a second so it doesn't mess everything up and then release deselect it reselect it and now it should use this cube see now it's using this cube as the snapping point then I can hold that for a second instead of that one over there which is part of all that so okay hold it for a second and release there we go okay now I can delete that I'm gonna I'm gonna undo this prefab deselect that cube because that was part of um, I believe I just copied I used it just to copy this piece at one point delete it and I just snapped it to a corner there. I don't know why I didn't just continue to use that piece because it doesn't really matter which one I use and I was already using the other piece so there was no point in creating a new cube point. Um, not for this anyway. There was a reason to do it over here and that's because I was trying to move pieces in alignment with this base itself. So, Okay, so now we've got land, we've got the cliff, and we've got our cave. The cave looks properly, you know, aligned and good now, um, as well as the ground. These things still need to be adjusted because they were, they're designed to match up to this side of the base, which is a different shape, um, and the ground here, and also up there where it joins, and this hole needs to be filled in because that hole is for that, so we're going to do that in a little bit. But next, uh, we don't have this prefabbed out up here, and we don't have this prefabbed out. So that's what we need to do is we need to select them. Oh, let's save it. Let's save it twice in a row. Let's save it three times in a row. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna select that. We're gonna grab all of these cave pieces. I do that whole three saves in a row sometimes, and that's so that if I have to get back to this point, and it's you know in the future, and not just right after I mess up like right now. Like if I messed up right now, it would just be the last save I made. But if I mess up like two or three saves from now, or mess up right now and not realize it, and then two or three saves from now, I realize I messed up right now, then uh, finding the save where it's correct is a little bit more difficult because it's only one save out of a, you know, 1,500. So what I do that, so I do that whole like triple save thing so that there's like, if I have to go fishing for it, there's three in a row that I can end up grabbing at random. Um, and that would be more, uh, it'd be quicker, easier to find, and all that kind of stuff, because there's three of it to find. They're all identical. Um, and the server's going to clean all those up later anyway, so it doesn't matter, because 343 is not going to care, because their server deletes old saves after about 30 days. So, I'm in the clear, as far as annoying people is concerned <laughs> with that. Um, let's see. Or taking up their server space, rather. In the clear. Okay, so this is selected. I'm gonna go inside that little cave door right there in a second to get through everything in there. So I don't have to be too meticulous with that area. I do need to get like this. Okay, I need to get this and this. Here we go. And once this is all prefab, it'll be really easy to copy over, obviously, like we were doing earlier with all of those other prefabs. Okay. Don't miss any pieces. Oh, I grabbed part of the wall. I went inside of it. Okay. Oh, and this piece. I'm gonna grab the ground here. The ramp can all be part of this. It's over here. There's a piece there. There we go. Is that, did it go plus sign for a second? I thought it did. Ooh, there's. Oh, I probably 
looked at this or something. Okay, so I believe that we've got everything there. I need to get inside here. Get all these pieces. That piece there. Okay, oop, what I missed something here. There it is. That thin piece there. Okay. Is that everything? Oh, I forgot to make that ground terrain. Okay, well. Um, I might do that. I might prefab this, place those pla those things down, and then um, and then copy this across to the other side with those as part of it. Um, <clears throat> so there's a couple of adjustments that I need to make, basically. Where I need to grab some pieces from out here for the, my terrain. These all have the texture already applied, so I don't have to continuously adjust textures or select all of the same piece and do them all at one time. Because I already have. Oh, what's going on now? I must be hitting something with physics. That warthog, which I placed there to drive around on in the last. Uh, oh, right, we need to get rid of. Should have gone the other way. But uh, let's see. Gonna rotate this. And rotate it this way. See, this is not supposed to just be ground here. You might need to flip it over, because that's gonna look horrible there. So, if we flip it over, we get to go down to the ground the other way. And actually, this will put some mud on the, um, some mud looking stuff up here, which is probably desirable. Go to object rotation. A little easier to understand which ways I'm going. Kind of look like it's more mounded up. Let's uh, go a little flatter so it's not so mounted against the wall. There. Ooh, turned off my slow. There we go. Looks pretty good. It's kind of bad over here. Bring this back up. Jeez, okay. It must be not quite as aligned as I would like. There we go. The other option is that I actually remove those sections from it. This is all one piece that goes across and into here. And so its scale is kind of important to be correct. Or to be to be wide enough for the whole base. But it doesn't actually need to be as wide as it is. I think I can end it right there. You know, right at that lip. But obviously I don't. It goes all the way into that corner. But yeah. Let's see. One to one scale? Yes, it is one to one scale. It is absolutely one to one scale. And uh, I'm. there are some people who scale these maps up and scale them down and stuff like that. I played a, a Sidewinder that was scaled up uh, the other day. Um, that uh, the creator actually had told me, asked me to go and take a look at it, and it's really well done. But the scaling up for a big team battle map wasn't necessary. It just felt really, it felt too big. The, because the problem is that vehicles aren't much faster in Infinite as they than they are in any other Halo game, and because of that, you don't actually need to scale the the, the level up for big team battle maps as much as people think. Um, because they're like, oh yeah, sprint, sprint, you know, completely wrecks it. No, did I just not deselect that piece? What? It's a plus sign? Okay. Oh no, I did do it. Okay, it worked. Um, that's what I found was that, like, uh, people are going a little bit overboard with the scaling, it seems like, with overscaling it. Um, trying to adjust it to fit the increased movement of infinite, but sprint isn't that much faster than regular movement, and regular movement isn't that much faster than previous Halo games. So there's not really a need to go that high. You know, that that, that large. Now, I think I had actually scaled this so that the floor was perfectly aligned at one point, but it doesn't even look like it is anymore, so that's not the end of the world. Okay, I did that because this area is supposed to be like a hole. You can kind of see, well, you can't see probably in 
Uh, big brain answer. Yeah, Sidewinder is too big to begin with. Yeah, Sidewinder was perfect for infinite. Uh, the one thing is big team battle sometimes is 12v12 instead of 8v8, but that makes uh, those older giant big team battle mechs work even better. IMO. Yeah, that's what I found about this one is that this one feels like look at this this is like the perfect scale for infinite sprint and we already know it was the perfect scale for vehicles in halo 2 so like this feels right this feels like a map that's exactly right for infinite to me like just just playing it and sprinting around like this like this like i'm clearing these gaps exactly as quickly as i want to and uh like, look at that. I don't know if you could tell just by watching me do that, or if you need to, like, feel it, you know, with the controls in your hand. But, to me, that feels perfect, <laughs> as far as that's concerned. I don't need there to be a snapping for this. Uh, can you measure the distance between the bases? I don't know that I can. But, um, what I did was, this is to scale. Um, where I was, so what I was planning on doing, I wanted to use the sniper rifle, because in, you know, Halo 2 and Halo 1 and all that, all the Bungie Halo games, uh, the sniper rifle had a, you know, a rangefinder built in. I wanted to use that, uh, very badly to perfectly get the scale, like, one to one. And then I get in here and I realized, oh, wait, there's no rangefinder in the Halo Infinite sniper rifle. That's kind of lame, but okay. Uh, and, uh, so I was kind of, you know, oh, a volume block, yeah. Uh, just make a block or a volume and put it in between the bases, then you have the distance in units. That's true. Of course, I don't know the distance in units in, in Halo 2 either, so uh, I'd have to look that up. Uh, which would require me to open the mod tools, probably. Uh, which I know that's what, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Unique Forms does. I think it's unique that I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah, so I might, I might be able to do that, it shouldn't be too hard. But yeah, be interested to compare the other infinite big team battle maps. Oh, that's what you want to know. Yeah, that makes actually, that makes more sense than just trying to compare it against the Halo 2 version. I like the way that this looks, like with that corner there. It looks pretty realistic. It needs to go all the way to the column, it looks like. So I'll need to get that by... Rotating it a little differently. Oh jeez, I keep on turning that off by accident. Um, there we go. And then I can actually scale it up a bit. And maybe scale it this way a little better. And rotate it that way a little better. That goes to the column pretty good, and there we go. Let's see. Um, yeah, I can I can definitely do that though. Scale like check that that distance and all that. Do that in a second. Uh, actually, I don't have the other base in yet, so <laughs> let's finish that first, and then we'll do that. All right. So there's the pile up, and it goes down as it goes back here, which I like. I like getting those little things, those little details, right? And obviously, they just had the polygon was flat. It didn't bump up like that, but that wouldn't look realistic to me. I feel like this needs to be longer. And then brought in here. So that it goes sort of smoother into there. Nope, that made it worse. Does it need to be shorter? Or maybe it does need to be longer, but not that much. Or I need to rotate it that way. I know this is, uh, riveting. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. There we go. Maybe that's what I want. Maybe not. Oh, you know what? This ramp kind of looks terrible anyway. You know what? I'm going to put... Where's my new one? There it is. I'm going to put a new one in here. Uh, and make this area a little bit more seamless in its correct... You know, it's in its appearance. Because this looks kind of weird. Let's see. So, Unique did some maps with Blender for scaling, others not. Guardian, for example, was just one measuring the original maps in the Forge using the spawn point objects. They're the same. Uh, so, check this out. I also use Blender. <laughs> this is uh, this is Waterworks from Halo 2. 
in Blender. Um, there's a nice, in case you want to do the same in the future, by the way, there's a nice um, file, uh, like a folder that someone created on Google, uh, Google Docs, where they've pulled all of the maps from Halo already, and they've just got them like sitting in this folder. So if you want to do a similar, like, you know, uh, Blender style, Blender's free, and you can just do that. I know, not, you probably already know, but just in case anybody else, because I upload these to YouTube too. So, it's a little tip. Um, but yeah, anyone who doesn't know, will know now. Let's see. Let's get this this way and kind of come up a little bit. There we go. That way we can get that smoother transition there into the new piece that's over here. And that looks pretty good, especially whenever it's not selected. There, do that. I think I want to slide it a little more this way so that these textures line up. In the dark, this is going to look really nice. Currently, it looks it looks okay. <clears throat> Let's see. That's kind of making it overwhelm the uh, ramp, so I will have to rotate it at this rate. There we go. This area will look, the little scene will be a lot nicer once the shadows cast, and once it's darker in general, and all that kind of stuff. That's weird, that light's not lined up. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So, now we have this piece, so yeah, select that piece, select that piece, and select that piece, and select this, and I'm going to put it into this prefab. And actually, let's see how much, how big this is, 102, so we got plenty of space still. Okay, so... Oh, nice. I wish someone could do that with Destiny maps. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder if they have. That person might have. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab probably one of these and just duplicate it. And then I'm going to snap it to here. Um, well, actually, no. I'll, I'll do that in a minute because I, I forgot I haven't even copied the base yet. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't really help to uh, to try and do that thing for you and measure the, ma the, the bases across because uh, there's no other base on the other side yet. <laughs> okay, so I need to select these prefabs, that prefab. No, I want to do one at a time. I'm going to have to do a section of the base at a time because if I don't, then I'm going to cause problems for myself. Okay, we saved it. Um, I think there was one other thing I wanted to add to this column piece before I copied it over. I think it was that this piece I'd forgotten that I wanted to add. There was a um, there's a bit of an angle here that I what well, just happened? Oh, I think I just froze. Yeah, yeah, my game just froze. There it is, crashing. Okay, interesting. It's a good thing I just saved. I really hope the save actually went through and that it wasn't the crash in the first place. Um, so yeah. If it started the crash, then the crash is done. Oh boy, you know what? Well, we'll find out. But wait a second, because we might just be paralyzed for 10 minutes because it might be trying to build me a backup save whenever it crashes while you're in Forge. It builds a backup save of your map, and whenever that happens, you end up with um, a 10 minute timer, basically, before you're allowed to do anything anymore. Uh, because the, yeah, it's just not, yeah. Let's see, if you measure the distance of one base and mid, you can double that and pretty much get the distance between the bases. That's true. I could be, it may be a little bit off, but I can, I mean, that's not too big of a deal. This is a little bit off. But yeah, I could definitely do that. It'd also be really cool, you can actually script something, uh, you can make a script that will say, uh, that will test to see if you're in forge mode. And if at the end of all of this I have enough script brain, uh, like, object, you know, capacity, um, then what I'll do is I'll go in there and I'll make a script brain that tells you all of this information. That, like, if you're in forge and you start a, uh, a match, like you hold down the X button, or the, uh, that button, or... What button is it? Back button. Back button. Whatever. Anyway, uh, for some reason, I can't think of which one it is. I just do it uh, whenever I'm in the in the game. But uh, 
basically, um, yeah, if you hold down the button and you activate it, and you go into the, the you know, Spartan mode, uh, then it will just, it'll come up with a little readout, and it'll just pop up with a bunch of information about the map uh, for anyone who's in Forge mode doing it, or messing with it, but yeah. Urging you can overcome that timer by locating into a different map. Oh, really? Like overriding your server side session. Oh. So we, yeah. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. So basically you open up a different map first and it will just it'll cancel that attempt and then go back to your other map. That makes sense. It looks like it didn't do it this time, and I know it doesn't always do it for every crash. So that info thing is clever. Yeah, I thought uh, yeah. Hey there. How's it going? Um Yeah, the uh yeah, so if you and, and you can also like fill out other info. I always put thinking about putting credits in there. Uh, when I very first thought of it, I was like, I could just throw in some little credits. I know it gives you credits, but like as soon as you hop into there and forge, I could just be like, yeah, here's some credit. Here's who made it, <laughs> and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, that was back before they even announced the credits, though. Whenever I was thinking about that, I was like, I could script in something as long as I could test for this, and then it turned out you could test for it. That if you're in forge, what is this? Oh, that's my height sensor thingy. Sometimes these aren't invisible whenever they're supposed to be. The measuring markers and I have to make them visible and then make them invisible again and that's basically what you guys were talking about was um yeah we'll duplicate this uh where do you want me to measure from just right here this is kind of the center front portion of the base and then we can stretch it out really far and then we can sort of rotate it toward the center let's see where is the uh, rotate, change pivot point, there we go. So then we just rotate it that way. Uh, toward, right around the middle of that central platform. Then we can move in here. And scale it this way. Come right to the middle. Yeah, that's about right. And it is a, let's see, size X. 320. That's interesting. It's like, uh, you know, almost a 360. <laughs> um, not quite. Uh, not as interesting, I suppose. Probably 360 to the center of the base, actually, which would be interesting because it's, you know, a sphere uh, or a circle. But anyway, two of those. So 640 uh, between the front door to the front door, basically, of the two bases. So I don't know how big the big team battle maps are in, um, uh, in in infinite the main ones, but yeah, I think you can make custom strings though. Yeah, you can. And uh, I've got I've got some that I was working on here for that to move for the shroud to move up and down up here. I call it the pump shroud. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, uh, Clint on uh, who a guy I met on uh, Twitter. Um, who also is a forger, has a script that he's got for moving a bunch of objects at once without them getting all like messed up. My script does that, but the first object gets messed up. It like it's it moves faster than all the rest, um, but it doesn't isn't quite perfect. And sometimes some of them like the bottom row will shift a little differently than the top row, and it's all messed up. And uh, I did a lot of work on that and couldn't figure out how to get them all to move at one time whenever I was working on it. But the um, but Clint is going to release a video on how to do that yourself, and he's going to uh, also you know um, let's see. Uh, he's going to uh, release a map that uses it for like these boats, uh, these are like little or little ships or whatever that move around, which is pretty cool, pretty much perfect amount. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's perfect. You're saying? Uh, is that how far the maps are apart in Infinite? Is is like 640 basically? I think you can't make custom strings. Oh, you can't make custom strings, you were saying. Oh, what do you mean by can't? By... Oh, custom strings is in text. Oh, I mean, that's true. You can't, can you? You can't just type in whatever you want. I couldn't write in the chat. I had to confirm my cell number, but I wanted to contribute on the idea from a while ago about the scale. I think a one-to-one -one scale is small. The speed of Halo 3 is... 13 kilometers an hour, an infinite sprint goes up to 19 kilometers an hour, and without sprint, it is 17 kilometers an hour. I'm still recreating a much loved map, and I think the size is super important. I think a 1 to 12 or 1 to 13 is. Or one, one, oh, a 1 point. Okay. 
one is the best scale. Yeah, that might be especially for arena maps. Like, I fully agree that, like, 4v4 maps need to, like, Prisoner. Prisoner would need to be scaled up. 100%. Uh, and, uh, I mean, absolutely. I don't mean, like, scale it up by 100%. Um, but, yeah, okay, I was gonna put a rock over here, so while I talk, I'll do that. Um, so basically, yeah, I, I fully agree that you do need to for some. But I just don't think you need to for big team battle maps all the time. Like, a lot of people are, uh, you know, thinking that you do, but I, I don't think you do. Especially because, like, some of these maps just moved really slow anyway. And doing this, doing it in infinite in general just makes it move like infinite, you know what I mean? It's... It kind of just works. <laughs> to me. Let's see, this isn't quite angled right. I think I'm going to use this side. It kind of juts out. Let's see, distance between bases, fragmentation. Uh, oh, I miss a few. Uh, fragmentation, 760, deadlock, 5. There's 650, high power, 600. I think fragmentation is the largest that a big two metal map can be scaled wise. Nice. Uh, okay, but you can't jump as high in infinite, so higher than 1, point, 1 to 1 is not so simple. Case by case, even between areas in the map. It's true, actually. You can't. You can clamor, so you kind of have an option there. Let's see, this is not the rock I want. Um, but the problem is that, yeah, if you can't, um, I don't know. I just, uh, I felt, I with this one in particular, I was like, I just want it to be one-to-one. -one. And that was kind of like a, just a dumb decision. Like a, a small brain decision in a way at the time. Um, but I was like, no, I just, uh, it needs to be one-to-one -one because this particular map, it's pretty big anyway. I'm just going to do it and find out. I was like, let's, let's just, let's just see. And then it worked out. But, uh, now that I've, now that I'm seeing it, I've experimented with it, you know, I'm like, okay, I think I made the right call and I don't think that I should have done it like uh, a lot of other people did. I, there was one person who did that in Waterworks and it's a little bit too big. Um, there was another person who did that in Sidewinder and it's too big. Um, but like, yeah, I think I need to, uh, there's one guy who did a pretty cool Waterworks already that is, um, it's not one-to-one, -one. he tried to make it like uh, banished style, which is a really cool idea um, that I also considered. Um, but the uh, the problem is that it's like he left these giant holes. Like you can fly on the banshee. I think it's a pre it's a work in progress still, but I don't know if he's still working on it because it seems to be an old work in progress. But I disappeared for like 30 days, so I guess he can too, <laughs> and then still come back and finish. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, you can't clamor backwards, that's true. You have to think about it more than just simply making everything slightly bigger. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, you couldn't you couldn't just, like, do this. And, um, like, now you can do this kind of clamoring here. If you made this more than bigger than one-to-one, -one, then you can't jump across here with a crouch jump like you could in Halo 2. So there's a lot of things like that that you have to consider that get really messed up. And... This is funny, because this is actually accurate, and I just rebuilt it exactly as it is in Halo 2. A little, like, lint, lint, uh, lintel, almost, thing that's above nothing. It's just kind of a weird little cube they put in there. Anyway, okay, so uh, we've got this thing pretty much done. I've kind of been leaving in some things like this here and there that were kind of mistakes at first. But, like, you could grapple shot up here. But that didn't exist in the original game, so I may have to, like, smooth that over. I don't know. It's kind of a... Uh, like this out, it's supposed to come out wider here, but it's not necessarily supposed to be like this, so maybe I do. Maybe I need to, uh. <laughs> maybe I need to actually do that. I was thinking about doing this, and now I think I actually have to. Uh, let's see. We're gonna go like this, scale it in, and just use this to smooth it over. But I'm making two versions of this map. The first one's going to be one-to-one, -one, and that's this one. And the second one is going to be a uh, one where I got to I talked to Max Hoberman about uh, on Twitter back and forth about this uh, about Waterworks in particular and its failings. And uh, he showed me he pointed out some problems that were with it, and I agree with him uh, that they were problems. And uh, even though it's one of my favorite maps of all time. <laughs> and I uh, figured out ways of fixing them and asked him if he agreed. And he was like, yeah, those sound good. Those sound perfect. 
Except for one, which was like a teleporter, and he was like, or a man cannon. He was like, I don't know about the man cannon. I was like, and he was like, I'd, I'd experiment with it. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna experiment with it and see if I need to cut it. And he said, that sounds perfect. So, or something to that effect. It's a walker. Um, okay, let's see. So I'm gonna do that version as well. This one is the one-to-one uh, -one version. I'm just gonna place this here, and it should. Finish out that and make sure it's not too bad. There we go. All right. So what else could I miss? Uh, let's see. Interesting about the new jumps possible with the one-to-one -one fun. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I really am. I, I really think it's gonna be fine, and I, I like the idea of infinite of it being like, like you can always go back and play, you know, the original waterworks on Halo Two and Master Chief Collection and get exactly one-to-one -to, -one to what, you know, it was before. I don't need to scale it for that, you know what I mean? But this is how this is the scale this this is the one to one version that makes it to where Halo Infinite's gameplay is now what's new. And and it accentuates the gameplay instead of trying to recapture Halo 2's gameplay by rescaling something. Apparently I missed a piece. Oh no, that was the piece I just cut out. What am I talking about? <laughs> okay, so I think this is ready to be copied over now. I'll just go select one of this. And then I can, uh, if I go left, yeah, this piece will act as the farthest point. So actually, it should be fine to do it over here, I think. Let's save it and duplicate. Could not place not enough physical space. Okay, let's get over here and try it on this side. Oh, I did grab a piece of the back wall at some point. Whoops. Okay. Gotta deselect that again. I thought I had deselected that before I turned it into a prefab, but I guess I must have selected more than one. Okay, there we go. That one, uh, and that one. And we'll go over here and copy and duplicate. It seems to have worked. There we go. This whole thing here. Okay, what's going on? I uh, see. Awesome, Max is a good brain to pick. Looking forward to your alternate version now. To two now that is approved by Max. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I I hope it's good. <laughs> I hope it's as good as I think it's going to be. Um, ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. I just rotated it. Okay, well we're going to delete it and copy it again. Look at that. Okay, so basically, uh, and basically what his main uh, critique of the map was is that, and this is, it all sums up into one thing, but then, and then I basically came up with the solutions and he uh, agreed that they would work. Um, and so that's cool. Um, but basically the one main problem with Waterworks uh, is that um, forward momentum isn't strong enough. I don't know if you guys remember uh, playing back in the day and going, yeah, I'm going to just sit in the base and defend the flag or defend the base or whatever. Or even just sit here and wait for other players to walk in here. I've got a shotgun or other close range weapon. I'm just going to sit here and not move. And they're going to they're going to come to me and I'm going to be like a spider with a web and I'm going to kill them all. And that happened so much in the original Waterworks. And that's what he was talking about, I think. Because he was talking about how people have no incentive to leave the bases. Um, there's no like forward momentum and so it doesn't tell a story as you're playing the map and uh, yeah I agree with him what happened here how is this so off oh wait a minute did I somehow select the wrong what did it do did I select the wrong block here okay I have no idea what just happened Let's delete it. I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> Let's see. This is weird. It should be straight out in front of it, but somehow it was way off to the side. And it's like I must have selected something wrong. Let's see. Uh, duplicate this. No, can't do it this, this way. I'm going to try it back behind the base and see what happens. Because this might be easier to understand and manage. Okay, so there's the block. Oh, it did that thing where it copied the block like a million times. I bet you there's a million over here too. Yeah. Every time it does this, it copies it like a million times. And I don't mind having all those blocks. I can delete them later. But this is the correct one. I probably selected the wrong one instead of the right one. This is the correct one. 
now I have the right one. Okay, cool. All right, that's good. Same thing happens to me on my Forge map. I didn't realize uh, I had moved 500 things, huh? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it's definitely some weird bugs involving this, but um, nothing we can't work out. Um, but I'm gonna hold this here and wait for it to load. Um, there's some workarounds, I mean, for pretty much everything, but they do need to fix it, very much so. <laughs> um, let's see. Hold it for a second and let it solidify, basically. It's like waiting for paint to dry or clay to harden. Okay, um, and now I'm going to rotate it. Uh, 180, there we go. There's the cube. I need to put it right there. Hold it again. I don't trust the control Z option, so I go back to the menu and reload to pass save. Well, if you don't trust control Z, I have news for you about the people on controller. The down uh, uh, on the D-pad undo is less reliable than the one in uh, like movement. In I often will use control Z because the oh, what is going on? Oh boy, do you see that? Somehow got rotated. This is abnormal. I've never seen that before. Uh, I don't know what to do about that except for to delete it and start over because I don't know if that's been rotated. And if it hit, if it has, then it's not going to line up with the base anymore. And I'm not sure how far to rotate it to get it back. Um, it might be something simple. It's not. I don't even know what direction it rotated. That is so weird. That's never happened before. I wonder if I even grabbed the right cube. <laughs> or if that cube wasn't actually it, and that was some other cube. Okay, I'm gonna go delete all these copies before I end up thinking that they're... I don't think I'm gonna mistake these for anything, but... Let's see... Okay, ooh, I'm gonna die. It went outside the level with some of these. I hope it didn't copy them out into the distance where I can't even see them or delete them. Because that would just be really disappointing. <laughs> and weird. Let's see. <laughs> but yeah, so the, uh, yeah, duplicating with the, or I mean undoing with the other one is even worse. Um, okay, I don't know which direction to go then. I'm going to go, I'm going to do this one again and hopefully it'll work out without rotating it. Um, let's see, duplicate. It's always fun to run into bugs, isn't it? <laughs> Get all those. So the one, the last one it duplicated, okay cool, so I don't think it's duplicating beyond the barrier of the map, because if it is, then this one wouldn't be the last one selected, it'd be really far away. So I just need to use this one, I guess. I assume that is the correct one to use, because, yeah. Because back here, um, is it rotated this time? It doesn't appear to be. Okay, and if I go into rotation, it just randomly rotated. I think I see what happened. I didn't have it set to 180 degrees, so I didn't see that it randomly rotated the moment I hit the rotate button. And then that's what caused the, the thing to be rotated, which means it had rotated the, the stalagmite that covers the base, which means it wouldn't have lined up. Oh, I'm hitting something. For a second I thought it froze. <laughs> I was hitting the warthog. Um, the warthog in the base is becoming a problem. <laughs> Let's see. Let's try and line this up. Uh, uh, I'm gonna hold it here, let it let it let it harden, and I'm gonna move it into position again in a second. It's gonna be nearly done today. Like today is the big day, the big copy over day, which uh, I said I was at eighty percent. I keep on saying it's at eighty percent by accident because I haven't changed my streams like text whenever I go live. I don't know why it's moving in increments of one. I didn't turn on. Turn that on. What, what was that? That was weird. Um, or I did click down the joystick, I guess, maybe? I don't know. Um, but like, I keep on leaving it at, at saying it's like, yeah, I'm at 80, I'm at 80%. It's like, I don't think I am. 
Uh, I do have to place all the weapons and the spawn points and all of that, which might require me to go into mod tools because I need to find out where all of the respawn points are uh, for the map. But um, but yeah. So did you use like the same coordinates from the Blender file? Uh, I basically eyeballed it, but I did it really meticulously the entire time using the height of Master Chief's like vision. Because I'll go to I'll go to Blender and then I'll switch to Master Chief Collection. You can kind of hear the hair, the uh, pump, and the mysterious sounds. Oh, the music's off. Huh. Um, but the uh, sound effects from... Jeez, is it rotated again? What the hell? Okay, it, we verified. It was not rotated before I grabbed it. And now it is. Okay. I don't know what to do about that, except for possibly to do it all over again again. Um, let's go to, let me just see if I can rotate this straight again, and if it is perfectly straight, that looks perfectly straight, but it isn't, it needs to go that way too, yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to verify 100% that this is right. Also, for some reason, it's not snapping all of a sudden. Oh, because I didn't select it last, okay. Yeah, let's see. Um, are you going to give it a Forerunner Infinite design aesthetic, or are you going to give it a cleaner design, uh, closer to the Halo 2 aesthetic? So right now, I've got it um, as, it's a really rusty structure in the original, and all that stuff. I've got it as my basic, like, block structure, but it's actually, like, practically polygon for polygon, the same as, um, as Halo 2. And this is going to be the one-to-one -one version. I might adjust like textures, some places, and stuff like that. But I am thinking that after, I, whenever I do my, like what I, I, the the one for, that I talked to Max Overman about, I'm going to I've been calling the glow up version because I'm also going to uh, adjust um, uh, some textures and stuff like that, and uh, try to make it look more like a modern version. You know what I mean? And then so I'm kind of going to do both of those things. It's just going to take me a long time to finish both of them, I guess. Uh, I do also want to get into some of the contests, though, and have other original map ideas, but I just haven't done them. Um, oh, apparently I left my cell phone all the way over there on the edge of the desk. Okay, and it almost had an alarm going off. Okay, try to snap that in. If this cube matches up, then it might... Uh, there's a, it's a little bit off still, but it's really close. So if I select this cube and that, go into rotation and go one more tick. Oop. Nope, that was more than one tick. I don't know why I did that. One tick that way. It appears to be lined up now, and now I just need to snipe it, snap it into position. Yeah, that, that gray line there is perfectly straight, I think. And if that works, then we're good, because this little rotation here is going to be multiplied significantly over there. So I don't want it to be... it's got to be flawless <laughs> as far as this little cube is concerned. Or else that, that base over there is not going to line up. Um, and I don't know why it keeps doing this, so I'm just going to try and fix it instead of trying to reduplicate it again, because I might do it all over again. Got to hold it, and release. Okay. So if this is right, then this cube will not have any clipping issues. It appears to be really close, but not perfect. Because of, you can see that little line there. Yeah. And it's specifically the direction I just had to rotate it. Um, what do you guys think? Delete it and start it over again? <laughs> I can do that. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it one more time, and hopefully this time the rotation won't bug out on me. And I really don't know why it's doing that. But, um... It's every time I go to select... Um... Or go to ro as soon as I hit rotate, it messes up. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select a, a different piece, like this piece here. Select rotate. I'm at one half. I'm gonna go to 180. Well... Hmm. I have no idea what's gonna what's been causing this, so I have no idea how to work around it. If I hit rotation, will it mess up? No, it didn't mess up this time. 
Okay. So now... Looked like the cube didn't turn that time. Now let's see if the cube looks like it's upright or if it's crooked. It looks crooked. That's definitely crooked. What is it doing? Okay, I'm gonna try... You know what it is? I'm rotating by object. That's the problem. Figured it out. <laughs> looks nice, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I just realized it's rotating by object. I've been, every time I rotate 180 degrees, it's rotating off of whatever random object it's decided is the rock for the center of the whole thing. And I wonder if that was the same earlier or if it was because I was... Oh, it was whenever I was fixing this piece. One of those times I must have switched it to object rotation uh, just absentmindedly and didn't realize what I was doing. So that rotation should actually be correct because it's on the world axis. And there we go. And uh, hopefully I didn't do that earlier with one part of the cave, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. But problem solved. Oh, I'm hitting the warthog again. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now we're past the warthog. Let's go over here, fly through all these rocks. There we go. That corner will work, and I will hold it, and wait, and let it go. Just to be sure I did delete the other cube, the correct cube before. Oh boy. Look at that. Somehow I didn't correct delete the correct cube. Okay, so that's important to make sure the snap is this corner then. Because this corner is the one that's lined up correctly. So it won't matter if I have the wrong cube still in existence. Because this corner is all that matters. Go. And then... Now that means I need to... Select this one and delete it. I thought I deleted the correct cube. I wonder if I selected the wrong cube and rotated it at one point. Whenever I was trying to fix it. Is actually kind of interesting. I mean, if it was actually built out, it would be interesting. It's a little like just cave, you know, no base. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't look good. It just looks interesting. Okay. Oh, you know what? This thing completely wrecked. It's like the rest of it's prefab, and I'm gonna need that to be back together. Whenever I go to move everything. I also wrecked this one's prefab. Because it should include all of these pieces, which I had to make adjustments on. I forgot all about it till now. It's a good thing I remembered. <laughs> Let's see. All of this. It wasn't wide enough. It turned out that I had um I had messed up and uh, made them too thin like left to right, and uh, had to make them, they were also like not thick, but, like poking out enough. Oop, do not want that. There we go. And all of this, which I finished recently. Um, actually, we might be getting too big. This is a big prefab. Shoot. I need to figure that out first, which means I have to reselect all of that again. Let's see. Uh, 140. Yeah, I can't handle all of those pieces. Okay, there's another prefab that's like very few pieces. I think it's this one. Yeah, this is just 12. And it, I think it might be because it's just lights. Hold on. It's that pylon and that pylon. But yeah, I'll just I'll just include all this other stuff into it because it's all getting copied over anyway. this, which got scaled. Oop, not that piece. That piece didn't actually get scaled. The rest of it was messed up, but that one piece above the uh, doorway was, uh, was the right size already. Let's see. There we go. Okay, and then we'll go over here and select these, and I believe that upper doorway one again is... Nope, the whole door. The whole door frame was right over and there is a piece inside of here I gotta select. There we go. And we're good. Yeah, nope. That piece needs to come. That one's fine. 
Okay. Alright. I think we're good. Think we're good. Okay. Put all that in the prefab. Okay, so. Now, um, I've got a bunch of different segments of this base, and I just have to make sure to grab all of them. Like this one, for example, is its own thing, apparently. I think it's because I was going to... Yeah, I'm going to release this this piece itself as a prefab for people to just, like, put into their map. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm just going to leave that zone prefab. Okay. This piece and this piece are also their own prefabs. I was going to release those as their own, but I need to straighten out those lights before I do that. Because uh, that looks goofy. Like, I think the center... This one looks correct. This one looks wrong. Anyway, um, yeah, let's go ahead and copy across the other side. One of these bases. Okay, uh, which way? I think, uh, this might be the easiest. Not a physical space. I do need to save this map before I continue. And, uh, I did actually have a case where I would do that and it would say not enough space, and then I would, uh, quit the map and come back in and find out that it had duplicated it, so I just realized I might, that might happen. I might find out that I have a couple of duplicates that already, that of, of various things that are not in their right place, just floating around and dipping into everything. Fortunately, it's just as easy as deleting them. But, um, yeah. Okay, so we've got our base. This is not the correct cube because it's supposed to be out in front of the base. Like that way. Which means there's a cube in here. Here it is. This is our correct cube. We need to select it second, so it's snapping. And uh, move it all the way across the, the map. This one is a huge prefab that's got, you know, close to 150. I don't know if this is entirely necessary, like I might be able to select more than one prefab. It's been a while since I started doing this, and I might be like, um, being overly cautious, so to speak. You know, I don't know if you guys have done this, but I just, I, I, don't, I want it to be fewer than 150 objects selected whenever I do anything. Um, because it seems to avoid a lot of the bugs. Um, let's see. That should be solidified enough. It seems to help avoid the bugs anyway. So I'm using, I use controller and mouse and keyboard, by the way. <laughs> I just switch back and forth. Which also causes new bugs. Like, they're, like their own bugs. And so, you gotta, gotta be careful. Like, if you, if you click away out of the wind, out of the game, into another window without pausing it, and then you come back, it'll randomly select an object on your map. And then if you go to move, it also will start moving it without you holding down the move button. So it'll it'll drag it. It'll like if you go off the off of Halo Infinite, and then you go back, and then you use your controller. You go off with the mouse, and then you go back with the mouse, and then you pick up your controller and start to move. It will have randomly selected an object, gone into move mode, and start dragging that object with your controller. It's ridiculous. It's a it's a really weird bug. Okay, we can let that go now. The base should be lined up is, then this will look right. Oh, part of it is missing, because it's not part of the same prefab. Okay. That's fine. It looks right, though. Like, this part looks right. And we've got down here... Oh, the floor is missing, because that's another part of a different prefab. These ramps are missing. Yeah. I had a... There's one prefab that's just like a bunch of loose objects, and I thought that that was the one with these lights, but it must not... It might not have been. Yeah, no, that's a separate one. It's this one. Which is like random objects all around. No, it's not. This is part of that one. Okay, weird. And that one is. Okay. Well, we're about to get that too. So, let's select it. And we'll go over here again. Because that seemed to work pretty well. Duplicate. There it is. It's a little bit in the wall. But it's not a problem. Select it. Select that. So if you guys end up seeing, if I end up pub publishing this map, and you go in to play it, and you see a bunch of these little cubes around, you'll know exactly what you're, uh, what's going on here. <laughs> you'll know exactly why these are there, and what they're for, and why they're, and how I messed up. <laughs> if I figure, if I end up, like, if it duplicates, like, a million of them, like it's been doing, like a line of them, like that one off in the distance there, 
that you can kind of see on screen there. Um, yeah, if you see a bunch of those, you'll know precisely how I messed up without with, with uh, not finding them. Okay, so there we go. Rotation is correct, but I gotta hold it. Let's see. And release. And drag this into position. I use the unique way. Uh, cone land. Oh, does he use cones instead of cubes? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's a good that's a good idea because then you've got the the like the little pointer. You can like oh, angle it like a pointer, I guess. And you've got the single point at the top instead of all of these like points, like snapping points all around the cube. But yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> Okay, hold it. I like how with controller though you can like turn around. You can look around even while holding it steady. With mouse and keyboard, you have to always be looking at your your tool and dragging it and stuff like that. I much prefer being able to do this. Personally, I feel like moving around with mouse and keyboard in general is just the worst, um, the worst way to deal with it. Um, but then moving around, but then uh, everything else is fine. But then precision of movement is, I think, easier on mouse and keyboard. Uh, because for me, with precision of movement, what I've been doing is actually um, I will scale for precision. I'll move the object into, into position, snap it on one side, and scale it to the on the other side for my to, to activate my sort of precision uh, movement. And then, and that will get me perfectly, you know, lined up with what I want. And that that seems to be the most precise way to move things in, uh, or to get things lined up in um, on mouse and keyboard. But with, uh, yeah, with uh, or just sorry on controller. With mouse and keyboard, though, you can just grab that little arrow and slide it until it's in the right spot, and much better. So there are trade-offs for both, and that's why I switch back and forth. So, ooh, missed a piece. Triangle missing on top. Apparently I didn't select it. I'll it to one of the other prefabs that, that I haven't copied yet. And copy it over. That little triangle piece right there. 80. No idea where my cube is. It might be that one. Hold it for a second. And... Go. Yep, that's it right there. Move it over here. That should be all lining up. Oh, I don't have the flag in a bay in a uh, prefab yet. That's something I got to throw into a prefab too. Let it go, and we've got that. What I'll do is I'll grab that one and add it to the pipe that goes over the top. Let's see. So there we go. I think I can copy multiple prefabs when it comes to those little pylons down here and the crow's nest on the corner. That would probably work. It's actually kind of interesting. Like, I, I want to release some of this stuff as a prefab. Probably finish out the base to where it doesn't, like, in here, it looks awful. Because it's inside the cliff wall, so I don't need to worry about it looking good. But I kind of want to make this into a prefab you can plop into any map and just, like, make it a, a base object. You know? In which case I would want to finish out all sides so that it can stand alone instead of having to be inside of a giant cliff every time. <clears throat> or a giant rock in general. Um, so, which one is it? That one's definitely in it, but that one's not. So I'll just add it to this prefab. And I think this prefab is, yeah, like 29 objects. I bet this one, and this one, and this one, and this one can all probably be duplicated at the same time, but I'm going to save the map because I haven't done that in like three movements at this point. So I'm going to duplicate, I don't know which angle I just did it, but it's probably done. That was probably a mistake, because now I need to find all of those pieces at one time. Uh, this is the worst piece to have duplicated in a random direction. Instead of, yeah, like there's that piece. Maybe we'll grab this, that, and two little pylons. 
And then our Q is who knows where. I might just undo this and redo it. Because the Q would be here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So that kind of worked. It was a little messy. A little... It was very prone to mistakes. And look, it duplicated the cube out a ton. And some of those duplicates are inside the level. So I'm not entirely sure that was a good idea to duplicate in that direction. But it is what it is. Because it's already done. I'm just going to hold it here. Nice progress. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's... Uh, it's really dark out here. Um, but yeah. Um, I'm hoping that by the end of today, it'll basically be built. And I'll have to do... Well, by the end of today, because eventually I stop streaming and I just start working on it. Uh, and that's because my kids have to do school. Because uh, they do a... Uh, uh, it's not homeschooling. Uh, I was homeschooled, but it's not homeschooling. It's actually a charter school that allows you to do the schoolwork from home on laptops that my state provides in the United States. It's pretty cool. Um, it's also very uncharacteristic of my state to provide such a service. Because my state is a very right-wing state. Um, and doing that kind of thing is, like, weird. But uh, they send them laptops and everything. It's really cool. Um, and it's theirs. Like, they're like, no, you keep the laptops. <laughs> it's like, what? Like, yeah, no, you, between semesters, there's no point in sending you another laptop. We're just going to let you keep the laptop. And also, it's basically yours now. Really? Um, so there's some pretty cool little perks for it. There we go. Um, but yeah, the point is, whenever they wake up, I usually stop streaming. Because I need to feed them and get them their laptops ready. And they tend to sleep in because we're homeschooled. And my wife works in a totally different state um, for work from home. So... She's in a totally different uh, time zone, so we're way off for our, our local time zone. So I wake up like we live here, and they wake up like we live in, like, California. <laughs> okay, let's go. There we go. And then, uh, yeah, it's pretty weird. It's a very weird lifestyle. <laughs> let's see, did I get my little angle? No. Little angle must be attached to some weird... Like, it was in a prefab. I know it was in a prefab. It was in a prefab? What the heck? Okay, what what prefabs are left? Um, the flag hasn't been copied over. I might just have to catch all prefab. Like, get all the stuff I missed. Because so I think I do have, like, pretty much the whole base. Oh, do I have that floor yet? Oh, good. Yeah, it's, it's moved over. The, the door back here is done. All the lights are done. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I'm going to copy those over after I put in my lighting on this ramp, because I forgot to do that. Um, let me start deleting these. So take up any kind of room in the thing, and if I delete them as I go, then I'm much more likely to catch all of them. Whereas if I delete them all at the end, I might, you know, mess up. Okay, so now we have two bases. And I need to select all of these wall pieces and turn them into a prefab. And uh, I need to add some more lights. And these crappy lights need to go. My little work lamps that don't cast shadows or anything. Because the lighting is uh, not very dynamic right now. And this thing needs to be deleted. But yeah, we're getting really, really close. Greetings from Mexico, the great taco land. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I have, uh, most of my viewers, I think, are in Mexico and in, like, South America and stuff. This is another thing. There's no fall damage in this one. There wasn't Halo 2, I believe, right? Halo 2 had fall damage, right? Halo 1 didn't. Um, I think it's because I'm, I'm in Louisiana, so I'm, like, straight north of a lot of those places. So the time scale, time zones are correct. Uh, for whenever I go streaming. <laughs> um, but, like, YouTube will show me the analytics of it and stuff like that, too. Uh, it's, well, I used to stream on YouTube, that's why. Like, the first, like, five episodes or something. Um, this hole needs to be filled in, too. Okay, so, let's see. Let's see. Um, let's get back to the work, I suppose. 
jumping around is fun and all, but let's see, that's not prefab. That's not prefab. There's that one piece over here, that one, yeah, that kind of smoothed out the the uh, slope. And then we've got all this. That is prefab. There we go. Everything over here is definitely not part of the prefab, so I can just go crazy with my selection. Go fast. Oh, the stalagmites have been... That's one of the reasons. I was, like, looking at the other side of the map, and I was feeling like... I was like, it feels empty. Why does it feel so empty? And I just realized it's the stalagmites. There's nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing in the back. Also, the flag is kind of colorful and is, you know... Pulling a lot of attention and doing a lot of the uh, grunt work of of uh, visual appeal. <laughs> Even though it was just a thing I just threw in in last stream. Or two streams ago? I don't remember. But it was like, it's a, it's a bent up panel that I colored red because it's been, it's curved in just the right way that the flags were in, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, Halo 2. So it, it feels right. I haven't quite, uh, you know... S finalized that yet, but it felt right, so I, I put it there. Let's see, that's not part of the prefab. That's not. That's not. Um, let's see, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not. Yeah, we're getting into the prefab now, right there. That's part of the prefab, but different prefab. Okay, I think I've got everything that's not in the prefab. Wait, what's that? Is that a prefab? Yeah, it's got a green outline. Sometimes it's hard to see. Okay, so I've got all that. And then, uh, what was the other thing I wanted to grab? Right, the flag and this little ramp. Um, I can grab those with it. The prefab all of them and now if there's anything that's not in the prefab it will be a lot more obvious okay, that's part of that prefab still okay there's a little extra detail down there no nothing. okay i might have the entire cave once i duplicate it over it will uh definitely find out oh wait that's this is not part of the prefab that should have been probably part of that column, but it was not. I missed it. It's fine. It works out. Because I can copy more. Let's see. I think that's everything. I think I think it is. I'm very... Mostly sure that that's everything. So I could do the, um... I could add the stalagmites to this prefab. Actually, wait. Okay. We're going to merge everything that I have selected. So that's one prefab. These are each individually prefabbed. I don't think I have every part of them prefabbed, though. Maybe? Like, I think I... Yeah, I removed the base from this one, for example. So I need to uh, add those back in. Because I was adjusting it. And these are... All one piece. No, this one's not prefabbed at all. It's like the biggest one. Okay, so we've got those all done. Um, so, oh wait, is this one? Yeah, this one is. Okay, so all of these are done. And I can select them. And then the ones back here. And then the, um, oh, this, dang it. <laughs> the last one, of course, was, I broke its prefab so I could adjust it and never put it back together. So now I have to reselect all of them. Okay, let's see. Here we go. That's there. That's there. I think I already have those. I'm gonna go check on the other side to make sure I have the right ones. Have yeah, I have those, I have those, I have those. But I don't have any of the rest of them. Yeah, there we go. And then the wall. And here we go. The cube. And now I'm gonna do this out the back. And Duplicate. And there we go. Now that thing's all shadowy. And I have to D okay, I gotta figure out which of these is the actual cube. Which is weird. 
I assume it's this one because it's the only. Yeah, that the, these are really close to it. So yeah, that makes sense. So this is unfortunately super dark. Um, let's try and get everything without grabbing any more of those weird. Um, there we go. There it is. This should be everything. Looks really cool. So this is the kind of outline. Like if you could toggle something on like this in the match. To see the outlines like this, that's a hole. So I missed a piece. This one. Okay. So, should I start over or just copy that one piece over later? I'll just copy that one piece over afterward and add it to the prefab. Um, and then grab this. Like, if you could add this kind of outline to the, um, to the actual, like, an actual match as a script. I think I mean it's like a, a what do you call it? Yeah, like a script brain script. I think that'd be amazing. Look, I'm getting a yellow triangle warning saying, "Hey, your budget's getting high, there, buddy." Eighty-six percent. I think there's something. Yeah, that was a huge jump. Did it double duplicate something? Sometimes that happens. It'll duplicate something like twice, or it'll um, and one of them will just be slightly offset, or like. 10 times and like nine of them will be offset and one of them will be where you want it to be where you expected it to go based on the way the forge usually functions um and that might be what we're dealing with here because that's usually what happens whenever this happens okay it's probably because i had multiple prefabs selected and i think that i messed it up by doing that and we're gonna have to go fix it but that'll be fine um hold it still <clears throat> That happened a lot to me whenever I copied um, that side to that side. It did that, and uh, I ended up having to delete. Like it was like it would it would every single time I copied a piece, it seemed like it would create like thirty percent of the memory in objects, like enough objects to like to eat up like thirty percent of the of the budget. I was like, there's no way I haven't been copying that much. I guess I didn't pay attention to how much the lights increased it as we were doing it, and the light duplicating the lights would be a lot bigger deal than just duplicating regular terrain objects. So maybe this is correct. I don't know. You guys probably saw. If you guys were paying attention to the budget while I was doing all the copying, uh, you might have even noticed, but I didn't. I didn't see it. I'll hold this here a little bit longer because I've got so many prefabs selected, but it's nice and smooth rotation of the of the uh, looking around of you know, the uh, aimer right now. So I think. It's okay to release at this point. There we go. We've got all that in, and the one thing that I missed was where was it? The, there's a hole in the terrain somewhere. Well, this is why I missed it. That hole wasn't necessary. It's probably behind something over here or something. Or it was this piece. That gap right there looks really weird. So let's go see. Yeah, it was something over here, I think. No? Maybe this is right. I don't know. Which piece was it? It was out here. That one. Is this one even visible inside? No, it's not. Okay, so what was the hole that was... That's weird. Okay, well, I'm going to delete this piece. It's not necessary. It must have been something to do with this piece that was supposed to be there. Anyway. Um, okay, let's see if I duplicated anything more than once. What's this piece doing? Is this one not visible from the inside? No, it's not either. Okay. I did have some piece, some areas built out at first and then I rebuilt them. So that's probably what happened, was that those pieces were extra and not necessary and probably only visible from the outside. I think I, I love the way it looks on the outside a little bit. Like it's it kinda just looks like a giant like bark. Like it's a tree bark or something, is what it looks like to me. Um, let's delete these. These were just like those. They were part of this wall that I had to delete. This one's not selected in any prefab either. And there it's that little tiny corner there. Really? I had it like that. Okay, yeah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> That's not necessary. Yeah, it's not like a hole to the outside or anything. Let's copy these. 
it's almost like feels like Minecraft grabbing these cubes. There we go. Grab these. Any over here? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh boy. Is that outside the map? Oh boy, it does create them outside the map. Can I not even get to those? Oh jeez. Well, there's a warning for you guys. Uh, if you start having a situation like this, it will, in fact, copy objects outside the map. You cannot get to those. I wonder if you save and quit and come back in, if it will clean the objects up that are outside the map, because that's, uh, if I can't get to them, like, it could be inside the terrain over here. Heck, it could have just deleted, it just could have just copied so many of them that are going off into the distance that it could take up like 10% of your budget if you've got like millions of these little cubes over there. And you wouldn't even know. Because they'd be inside the cliff. Oh boy. Well, we have a current version that's, uh, yeah, that might have some weird, um, uh, cube issues. Um, but, yeah. Okay. So we copied it across. We've got red on both sides. They should be both identical. But this is the actual... Right. Is this the copy? Okay. Now I can't tell the difference. So this side, I believe, is the... Uh, the one I'm on right now, I believe, is the red side. Go into Master Chief Collection down here. I'm on the red side, and if you look up there... Oh, no. It's opposite. I was wrong. I got turned around. Um, so, red side, when looking up at the base, has that side. The sloped part on the left. So this is the actual red side. So let's go change this to a blue flag. And then from now on, it won't be confusing. I'll actually have... Whoa, what the heck? What happened? Oh, I'm in a prefab, duh. <laughs> Sounds like my son is awake and ready to get breakfast. Let's change this to blue. That's a good blue for this. That's the right blue. For red versus blue. We've got a perfect example right here. Let's go grab it. Let's just fly over there and look at it. Get in the Banshee. Fly to the blue base. You can see that in the lower right corner, what I'm doing there. Uh, if you're on your phone, you can't, but yeah. By the way, you use your mouse to click and drag a selection over the objects outside of it. Oh, you can? Like, really far away? Oh, thank you. That's really good. It's very helpful. Okay, so it's this, like, it's kind of a cobalt color. Actually, the one that I have selected right now is very close. Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, I'm probably not even going to use this as the flag eventually. I, what? Okay, I don't know which one it was. I guess that one. Uh, I'm probably going to find a different object for the flag. I just like the way it's bent. But like this corrugated effect is on the 3D model. It, no matter what you do, even if you change the texture, it goes. It stays there. This is actually set to linen. So like that that um the uh, normals map is part of the model, and the normals map. Has those ridges in it. So, okay, so thank you for um, letting me know about that. Let me see if I can grab those. Where were they? They're on the other side or this side? They were on the red side or the blue side? Okay, they are. They're over here. There they are. So, you're saying that if I don't die, um, if I switch to mouse and keyboard and box select, I can select them. There's only two. Okay, good. So, Unless the others are so far away. Okay, so there you go. It, it's outside the kill box, but it's not outside the arena so far that you can't select it. And I'm not getting any over there. Okay, cool. So it's not as extreme as I thought it would be. I was really worried about that. Let's see. Oops. Mouse and keyboard. No. And over here. Mouse and keyboard. Uh, nothing. Okay, cool. So it's just those two. Okay, good. 
Thank goodness, and thank you for the tip. You could always add the uh, unscrupulous decal over it. Well, autocorrect UNSC decal. Yes. <laughs> well, the UNSC is unscrupulous. Um, yeah, I think so. I think that's a great, good idea. Um, and that will sort of uh, hide the ridges. And I didn't really hate the ridges. They kind of look kind of cool on it, but I still just felt like, yeah, like I want to do stuff uh, to make it look a little better. Um, but th there may be another object that's better. I was actually looking for the pipes, like the like the wires or whatever, and I was gonna flatten it and then make it super wide to sort of make like a flag kind of cloth thing. But I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I just I didn't even try it because I never found them. <laughs> I was looking for them, found this, and just placed it. I went, okay, that's good enough <laughs> for now. Because I wanna I wanted to move on. I just wanted the flag so I could for this purpose so I could identify which base I'm at later on. And because I just want them there to look good. So I need to bit rebuild this to where it actually collides with this, because this side is steeper slope, and that side is apparently more rounded. Um, and that was actually true of the 3D model. Uh, and I need to close this up. And, uh, yeah, that's like... I need to build the, uh, the, the shaft. Um, totally going to name that YouTube video going down on the shaft. 100%. Um, like every single thing, every single YouTube video, I have some stupid uh, either innuendo or just pun um, <laughs> involved with the name. Um, well, they're all just sort of like building waterworks in Infinite and then like a subtitle that is uh, to differentiate them better than a number. I think the number is just having a number there is kind of annoying, so I put a little subtitle. But anyway, uh, yeah. <clears throat> this is looking good so far. Oh, let's drive a warthog through it. This is definitely time to drive a warthog. What is that? Is that a copy problem? Or is that because this is the red side? This is the side I built out. I must have moved something. Yeah, it's on both sides. I'm going to adjust that. I moved this piece. I probably moved it in the wrong way. Okay, well. Anyway. little A little artifact of, a, of an earlier adjustment. Oh, I'm not in to hold down the back button, build it out, let's drive, a oh, it chose this respawn point for me, okay, teleporter, that's fine, just gotta jump in the teleporter, I still have all this down here, because a lot of people delete that, and I'm like, I don't want to delete that, because if I delete that, then I don't have it on my, uh, it's not in the budget, I like that it's already down there, because it's, it's already taking up budget space, so now I know that I don't have to worry about budget for uh, King of the Hill, for example. I've got enough hills down there, probably. Close to it. And uh, I've got enough, you know, respawn points, or I've got enough uh, initial spawn points down there, so I don't need to worry about that in the budget. I just need to worry about some things that are going to come up later. But yeah, that's what we were talking about scale earlier. Oh, that little floating light was my prefab, like, that I was copying for all the rest. Um, the, uh, with scale, like, the Warthog right now would be driving through an enormous map. If, like, I doubled the scale, this map would not be right for the Warthog anymore. It would be totally wrong, you know what I mean? It would look, it would be terrible. It would be like driving around a, uh, a giant empty wasteland. This is going good so far. I like this a little bit. There's a tank in there, because that's how I scaled the, the width of it. Oh, it's not here for some reason? That's weird. It's there in the actual build. But something... Did it blow up because it was too close to stuff? Maybe. Oh, no, I've got it set to not spawn at the beginning of the match. That's right. I think that's the case anyway. But yeah, I, this this width is exactly right to where the tank... The, a wraith tank... It's like wings of like just barely don't touch the walls like in, back in it thanks <laughs> uh he, he said map looks good um oh there's a tank here i'll show you i'll show you this was something i remembered very vividly from from uh playing you know in waterworks so i just had to make sure i got it right was that like it's just the right width for the wings they scrape the sides and sparks fly and that was the case with the original map and so that's how i that was like my main initial scale like, I built out that piece with, with an earlier version of it that looked like kind of like garbage. 
And then I got to the bridge, and this was where I started all of my scale, was off of a tank. This, this wraith is what all of the map is based on. Because I initially got it right here, and then I started building the central structure. And I built all of the rest of that off of, you know, how it looked to one another, how the pieces looked, you know, next to each other, and how so, how big they were next to a Master Chief uh, little scaling, uh, you know, object. And then I turn to Master Chief mode and see how the height of things for my vision. I'd set it to where it's kind of like it's, it's the right, you know, vertical look as I could to be perfectly centered on both Master Chief Collection over here and Infinite over here. And then, uh, yeah, just basically that's why it's like all eyeballed precision it's like as precise as I possibly could get it but it technically was fairly eyeballed and uh, yeah I'm sure that uh, Unique has you know techniques um, that he does that are like way better than this but I feel like anything that requires me to reference something else for every single object might take too long I don't know it would I was worried it would break my flow let's see I think there's a way up right here with infinite movement, but I could be wrong. I might have fixed that because there wasn't a way up in the original waterworks, and it wasn't because of infinite movement necessarily. It was just there, but yeah. Anyway, so the point is, we're looking really good. This is like practically done at this point. Uh, I need to place objects, and I need to do some more tweaking, like those holes and adjusting the ceiling, and I need to go get my son some food. He's been saying "daddy" and banging on the door this whole time. I don't know if you can hear him. Um, but he's just outside the door, tapping on the door, and get my, trying to get my attention. Need to fix up this side too. But yeah. Yeah, he uses Blender to get vertex coordinates, then spawns a cone at that vertex point. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of extra work. Um, that, I don't know if it was 100% necessary. It might get him faster, actually. I don't know. Maybe it's faster that way, maybe it's slower. Um, I haven't adjusted lights either. Like, these are all, like, I'm pretty sure these are all these set to, like, 5, 6, or 10. I forget which, or maybe there's probably all of those. Um, so it looks really bright. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> That's super bright compared to the original map. This this freaking ramp keeps messing up for some reason. And I don't know what's going on with it. This specific ramp, the angle, keeps on readjusting itself. And I've had to fix it like a million times. I might have to delete the object and re-replace it. Like, replace it? Copying one of these or something? Because it just keeps on fi like breaking itself. Like that little lip there. It's got, like, that's the lip on the other side. Like, it's just, like, it twists. And weird angles and stuff. And I've probably fixed it wrong sometimes because of how much it's been messed up. Because it's, it's, like, the, the rails are right, I think. Hopefully they are, but, yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> it, yeah, this is going to be accurate, too, because of the way that I've done it. But you're right, it probably would have been even more, or like, not even more accurate, I don't think it's more possible to be more accurate than the way I've done it, because of it's, it's been doing it the way I've been doing it, but like, I, I feel like for a big team battle map, I know he's been doing smaller arena maps, and smaller arena maps are like, yeah, of course, do that, you know, you you only have like a couple dozen cones to place practically, and you're done. But with a big team battle map, you'd have to like, the number of cones you need just to scale that that one base over there, would have been equivalent of like a quarter or half of a 4v4 map. Just that one base. And then you've got to get all the stalagmites and stalactites in the right place. I haven't even put stalactites. Um, you got to get the ramp in the right place. You got to get this bridge in the right place and inside there. I was just like, there's there's no way. There, I'd have like, I'd have like over a thousand cones just for this one map. Just for like, like half the map and then copy it over like I did before. And then of course this inner part, this inner base is so complex. It took me like Honestly, half of the work has been, half of the time has gone into building this. In, what is this? I don't think it's messed up there. What the heck? I don't know when this happened, but uh, I need to scale that apparently to fit over here. I must have been looking on this side and placed it. Anyway, um, so like this, this central structure took the like half of the time to build this entire map because it's, I didn't realize how complex it is. It's insane, and I got I have all the angles exactly as they were in Halo 2. So like everything, like every like you see all these pieces, it's it's crazy. This took up like their 25 percent of the budget, something like that, 20, 22, 25 something. And I've got like yeah, everything's like precise, 
um, that off of each other and like snapping and scaling and all that stuff. It's, it's it took forever. Anyway, you're doing great. Keep up the work. Thanks. <laughs> it's uh so yeah. I think I'm going to. I need to figure it out from Clint <clears throat> since we're getting so close to this being done. Um, I can just leave this here and not be a problem, or I could grab the whole thing and move it up so that it's not in the way, so, like, banshees can fly through here or whatever. Um, but, um, when Clint gets this done, uh, gets his scripting thing done, uh, I talked to him about the possibility. He keeps on trying to avoid answering the question every time <laughs> I ask him this question. Like, I've asked him, like, three or four times, and every single time I ask him, he's like, All right, it's time for me to leave chat. I gotta get going. But basically, I've been asking him, like, why don't you just give it to me, and I will not show on stream how it's done. I'll just use it this one time, and you're going to release a video that teaches us how to do it anyway. So if you just give me the script early, I can finish this map and be done, and it'll be great. Uh, and, uh, he keeps being, he keeps, he keeps being dodgy on that, trying to dodge the question. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's something that I might be able to get this thing going up and down and playing the sound effect and stuff like that eventually. But for now, I guess it's just going to sit there. Um, unless, if I finish it before he finishes his thing. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. The shaft. That's next time. I gotta get going and feed my son. He's probably very hungry at this point. I gotta save this probably three times. And then I'm gonna uh, say adios. <laughs> Catch you next time.